Well, hello, YouTube Power Hour Squad. Erica here for a brand new interview for you. And now this interview, I'm interviewing for my first time ever a set of twins on this channel. And they are the gorgeous glam twins, Kendra and Kelsey. They've been on YouTube since 2011 and have really made a name for themselves here on the platform. And in this interview, they reveal really how they've been able to maintain a channel for so long, how it's like working with your twin on YouTube, and how they really decide on the type of content that they create on their channel and continue to stay relevant and continue to create content that people want to watch. If you're new here, welcome on the YouTube Power Hour podcast. I pull back the curtain to reveal what it's really like to be successful on YouTube through my interviews with successful women on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the interviews that I have coming your way. Enjoy this interview. Mwah. Well, hello. The Glam Twins are in the house. My first time ever having twins on the podcast. Welcome, ladies. Thank Hi. you for having us. I'm glad yeah. we can be the first set of twins. Yes, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. yes. So I'm so, so excited to have you. I had a lot of requests to have you on. So I'm excited to kind of dive in to your experience on YouTube and your YouTube channel. So why don't we start with you guys sharing just what inspired you to get onto YouTube in the first place? Well, basically, we were always obsessed with hair. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been obsessed with hair products in particular since we were like maybe eight or nine. We would be like those kids in the beauty supply store reading ingredients and um, basically wanting to know more about hair products because we had a lot of hair. Our whole lives it was super thick, very hard to manage. Um, so it started out with being obsessed with hair and then um, when we were introduced to YouTube, we basically started were trying, we, yeah, we started watching and we were trying to learn how to do our own hair at home because it started to get really expensive for my mom to pay for both of us to get our hair done. Mm. And you know, the more hair you have, the more they charge you because you have to be in the chair longer. So we were like, mom, we can, we think we can do our own hair now. She was like, are you sure? Cause I don't want any horror stories or anything like yeah. that. <laughs> um, so we basically said, can you give us the money that you spent to get our hair done and we can buy our own products and do our own hair at home. So we basically just started watching YouTube hair tutorials. And then that's when we discovered a whole new world of like uh, hauls, makeup, makeup tutorials. tutorials. And I was the like whole beauty community on YouTube. Yeah. We were like, what is this world? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's it was how like we our were. TV. We didn't even watch TV as much as much as we watched YouTube. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then you decided to start your own channel. Start our yeah, yes. start our own. And Glam Twins 334 was actually just a name that I came up with to watch videos. It was just a regular account name. Mm. It wasn't a channel at first. It was just the regular account that, you know, we used to watch videos. And I just never changed the name when we started making videos. So that's the name people became familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, a couple a couple years ago, though, we changed it to The Glam Twins. It just took off the 334. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what people, you know, originally no, no, it's the Glam Twins 334. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And so when you first uploaded your video, your first videos, when was this? What year was this? Uh, 2011. Oh. No, technically it was before that. Before that? We just privated those videos. Yeah, because <laughs> at first we just started doing it for fun as a hobby. We weren't very consistent. We would leave for a few months and come back. Mm -hmm. But when we consistently started uploading was 2011. 2011. Yeah. We were like, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to start a YouTube channel and consistently, you know, put up videos for you guys to watch every week. Yeah, so. so what happened in that moment where you decided to really take it seriously? What was the moment we wanted to take it seriously? When we um, discovered that you could actually get paid from making videos because mm -hmm. it was a hobby at first and it was like really fun for us just to do it. But we didn't even know you could get paid from doing YouTube at the time. And at the time you had to apply to um, be, get, partner. be partner on mm -hmm. YouTube to get paid through Google AdSense. Um, so they had to approve you back then. Now anybody can just get on and, you know, turn your monetization on and get paid. But then you had to get approved. So um, we were like, okay, this is very interesting. And my mom, she thought it was a bunch of BS. She was like, How can you can get paid through YouTube, yeah. through Google. I was like, okay, mom, we'll explain it later. Because our mom was like, skeptical. if you're having, yeah, she was skeptical like any mom would be. Yeah. Um, but 
time. Of course, when we started out, we really weren't making that much. And we, at all. Yeah, we because we were still working regular jobs at the time. Yeah, we were working retail and at restaurants. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. um, at the time, we were still living at home, and we were trying to save up to move to Atlanta, which is like two and a half, three hours away, because mm-hmm. we wanted to go to beauty school here. Mm-hmm. And um, we finally found a cosmetology school to go to, so we were saving up for that. Mm-hmm. So at the time, we weren't even in college or anything. We went to college, but it was like for a semester, and we dropped out. It was not for us. No. So at that point, we decided we were going to just work two jobs, each of us, and just save up. So that's what we did. Mm-hmm. Mm, okay. So then you said you started, you, you said, you know what? I actually see that we can make money off of this thing. You got the monetization. And then you said, we're going to take this seriously. And that was back in 2011. So you guys have been on YouTube for quite some time. A while. Yes. Yeah, a long time. So you've seen things change, change. and evolve. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So let's, I guess we can go back to, you know, when you guys were taking it seriously. At what point did you feel like, because you were still working your jobs at the time when you were taking it seriously. At what point did you guys make the decision of, you know what, I think this can actually be our career? Um, I think when we made the one of the first, one of the I think was it like maybe like our tenth check, eleven check. I don't even know which one it was, but the check that we realized we could use to pay rent. Mm. I was like, okay, we have something yeah, here. We had already moved to Atlanta at this point when we realized that we could do it as like an actual job, job. not like a part time thing. Mm-hmm. Was after we moved out and that that first check I remember vividly. I'm like, wait, this is like actually. Mm-hmm. something to save up it's yeah. not like you know something that's not going to put a dent in anything yeah, yeah. Uh, cause it, it was like it was like that for a while but then when we finally got that check it was like okay we can actually do this because mm-hmm. our original plan was to just work at separate salons and you know do our, our own you know day job thing mm-hmm. working at salons after we graduated yeah but youtube became more demanding and people kept wanting to see more videos and we didn't want to like start something and then be like you know wait we have a career change and we're gonna leave so we didn't want it to be like that yeah of course and so um so then you decide hey you know what i'm getting enough enough money we can kind of do this so at that point did you did you quit your jobs both of you um yes we both quit our jobs when we got ready to move to atlanta because we have enough we had enough money saved up Mm -hmm. to actually make the move Mm -hmm. um so it was a combination of having enough money saved from those jobs to make the move and YouTube. And YouTube. So. Got it. And so how far <laughs> into... Excuse me? Oh, it all kind of happened all at once. Okay. So how far into your you know, your YouTube journey did you make this decision? You started it Take It Seriously at 2011. At what point did you actually quit your jobs? And how many subscribers were you at, do you remember, when you quit your job? Like... 30,000? 40? Oh, okay. I think it's like 40,000. 40,000 subscribers. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it was around there. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't even like a huge amount. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Views, views were different then. Like if people were interested in something, they would just, it would kind of happen really fast. It wasn't like, it didn't get like a plateau. Because now it's sporadic. People watch different things nowadays. But mm-hmm. then beauty was so like in high demand that you just knew people were going to watch. Mm. So. And then how many videos a week were you uploading at the time? At the time? Well, when we first moved to Atlanta, we were uploading maybe once or twice a week because mm-hmm. we were in cosmetology school and mm-hmm. it was like 11 hour days. And yeah. it was like, this is becoming to be kind of over- overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Um, but after we finished cosmetology school, it was only like a year program. Um, we decided to stick with two videos um, a week. And then maybe like a couple of years after that, we started doing three videos a week. Mm. Um, and I was like, I don't know we just, why we did this to ourselves. That lasted about a year. <laughs> okay. It was too much. Yeah. It was too much. <laughs> it was way too much because it's easy to get a lot of videos up if you're not doing as much editing to them. Mm-hmm. Um, so we wanted to do more quality than quantity and not just put up a whole, a whole bunch of videos to just, just to say they were up. So that's when we decided to, you know, scale back and just, you know, do like one or two beauty videos a week and then one vlog, um, a week because mm-hmm. we have a vlog channel as well mm-hmm. that we started too. Oh, okay. Did when you had the three videos a week, did you see more growth and income from your channel? Like, did you actually see it paying off? Mm, I honestly feel like it, it stayed the same. Mm. I mean, our subscribers were loving it. Yeah, we were getting more subscribers. Um, that was the fastest we got that many subscribers in a shorter amount of time when we were uploading three videos a week yeah but the views stayed about the same yeah but the views were pretty yeah mm-hmm. mm, okay got it and 
so at what point, how long had you been on YouTube at, at that point? Oh, like oh. four, like four years. Four years. Okay. So then you guys quit your, you quit your job, um, but you're doing school uh, uh-huh. and then you're doing YouTube. So then I think this is so interesting in, you know, you guys being twins and sisters and having this business together, right? And having to coexist, work together, you guys live together, right? So you yeah. do everything together. So how do you guys divvy up the responsibilities of the channel and decide who does what? Is it one person that focuses on one thing or do you guys kind of both do both things or how, how do you work that out? Um, it depends on what we both are interested in. Like we both mm-hmm. kind of bounce ideas off of each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it depends on what we have in mind for that month. So we'll plan month to month. Yeah. And depending on what people are interested in, we'll go back and see what they liked before mm-hmm. and kind of play off of what yeah. they're going to be interested in for the next month. Yeah. Or if it's like a whole new idea, we just kind of hope it goes well and think, <laughs> I hope they like this, but I really want to do it. So it's a combination of us staying, staying authentic and wanting to do things that we actually enjoy making and also things that they're actually going to care about. So, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, we kind of have to find that balance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So but I'm more of the editor type person. Yes. So I kind of if there's like a new editing software or something um, goes wrong with the computer, I usually take, you know, full control over yes. that because she's not very tech savvy. I hate it. So, <laughs> it's not my thing. She can teach me how to do it mm-hmm. after yeah. she's figured it out and I'll continue to do it on my own. Yeah. But initially, if it's something new, if it's an update, I'm like, teach me how to do this because I don't know what I'm doing. Mm. So <laughs> You're a fast learner. Though, yeah, so. I'm a pretty quick learner, but initially I don't have the patience to sit there and figure it out. <laughs> yeah. it's, it gets stressful. Mm-hmm. So that's her thing. Yeah. Yeah, and so so you so it sounds like you guys do you guys both do the editing or yes or so you still if both do a, it mm-hmm. yeah we both do the editing if it's a individual videos like if she has a video she'll edit her own video and I yeah. have a video I'll edit my yeah. own but if it's um videos of us together sometimes we'll edit together or we'll ping pong we'll alternate like if she edited the last joint video I'll edit this one and so forth yeah so we both edit the videos together Mm -hmm. yeah i saw that you guys kind of switch off that sometimes one of you's in it the other one's in it sometimes it's together Mm -hmm. how do you how do you decide how do you decide that um basically if like if i have an individual video idea or if she has an individual video idea uh so that's basically how we decide that because Mm -hmm. or if someone requests something like kelsey i want to see a skincare routine or Kendra, I want to see you talk about perfumes. So it also depends on what the audience is asking yeah. for as well. Mm-hmm. Do you find that, that is it, do you get more views? Like maybe when you guys are together or do you get more views solo? Have you found there to be kind of patterns with that? Honestly, it's a combination. Yeah. It depends on the actual the type content. Of, the type of video. Yeah, so whatever the content is, is based on exactly what they want to see. So mm-hmm. whether it's just me or just Kelsey or both of us together, if that title says something that they've been waiting for, yeah. then they click it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, got it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it must be really fun to be able to, to, to one thing that I always hear from YouTube creators is that it's a very lonely experience that yes, you might have all these people that you're interacting with, you know, through comments, but the, the work itself is, can be lonely. And so it, it's, it's, it's really cool. The fact that you guys have each other to be able to do yeah. uh, mm-hmm. this whole huge endeavor. Yeah, definitely mm-hmm. together. It definitely. definitely makes it easier to have a partner um, in crime or mm-hmm. if you read some negative comments, you can kind mm-hmm. of vent to each other. Yeah. Um, so that makes it a lot easier. But the only thing about being twins and having a channel is not only are people comparing you to other channels, but they're comparing us to each other. So mm-hmm. that also gets kind of annoying. Yeah, you that know? Gets so there's like double comparison. I'm like, okay, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> how, how do they do that? So just individually, like with twins in general of the same gender, people mm-hmm. compare you anyway. Mm-hmm. So they're, comparing how you look and how you look different or how you look the same or um sometimes if you do something that they just I don't know they make you feel like you're not you know the other sister like well Kelsey did it like this or well Kendra does it like this yeah they (laughs) they tell you that you do everything together but when you want to be an individual they make you feel bad about that too (laughs) so it's just like people don't know what they want they don't know what they want to see so when they see twins they forget that you know we're two different people Mm -hmm. but we're also best friends and 
Um, unless the other twins obviously understand that dynamic and that relationship. Um, so it gets frustrating when they complain about us even being together a lot, like on our blog channel. Mm. They're like, oh, we never see you guys hang out with other friends as much as you hang out with each other. But I'm like, my uh, friends don't want to be on YouTube. <laughs> but I'm like, the other people's channels, like if they have a boyfriend in every video, no one complains about that. Mm. Or no one complains if they see, you know, the same person over and over in their videos. But since we're sisters and twins, they just find a problem with it, which I don't really get. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so do you guys, are there any, there's so many amazing things about, like you said, being twins, being sisters, doing this together. Are there any things, uh, anything else that, that you guys struggle with ever when it comes to the content or uh, working together? Mm. What would you say is a struggle for us working together? Working together? Well, obviously we fight sometimes like most partners and siblings mm -hmm. do. So sometimes we fight over, uh, so usually over dumb stuff. So it's not, you know, anything yeah. serious usually. But sometimes it's on the most important days where we have like a lot to do and we just have to get it together really fast. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we'll argue what, right before a video and then as soon as we press record, we're like, hi guys. <laughs> yes. And they, will, they won't even know that we were just like cursing each other out or yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't know as far as anything difficult, just in general, just being on YouTube, I personally feel like it's hard to stay relevant mm. nowadays, so, not then, but now it is nowadays, even, even with us being sisters and being twins and having that dynamic that separates us from other channels, even then people will still find other things they're interested in and you still have to find that balance with staying relevant, but also being authentic and true to yourself. Cause mm -hmm. you're like, I don't want to do that. Like that's yeah. not me, yeah. but that's what everybody seems to like these days, mm -hmm. but you don't want to feel inauthentic or fake or yeah. you have to be, you have to keep up with that. And mm -hmm. I'm not an actress. <laughs> so <laughs> You're like, I, I can't pretend. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when people are interested in something that you see, you know, it's doing really well and they, people requested and were like, well, that's not this kind of channel. You have to like, kind of let people know like this is what it is and hope that the people that appreciate authentic authenticity stay, stay on your channel yeah and then the ones who don't they just i mean it's you know a blessing in disguise i guess mm -hmm. yeah so let's talk about that because being on youtube for you know t like since 2011 mm -hmm. like what you said staying relevant after all these years it, it can it can be difficult so what do you guys do and and also you know what do you what do you even see as being being relevant? Um, to me, um, relevancy, I, I guess that's it's different for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, but to me, it's, uh, the person everybody's talking about, obviously, is based on views as well. Some people say yeah. don't um, that numbers aren't important, but I disagree with that. YouTube is a numbers game, and yeah. if you're not getting views, you're not making money. Mm -hmm. um, so um, that's just the realization of it all, but... We just always just try to stay authentic whether we get a ton of views on, or, or we don't. Mm -hmm. We just cannot fake the funk for anybody. Uh -huh. So I think also that I think that's because we have been on YouTube for so long and we're like considered like one of the OGs of like YouTube or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's still what, set, what it, it's what set us, sets us apart from other channels because I feel like anything that's trendy eventually is not going to be a trend anymore. So I feel like if you just stay true to yourself, you will no longer, you, you won't have to change that. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's just easier to me to do you other than trying to keep up with everybody else because what, what everybody else is doing eventually, you know, will die out or whatever. But if you're always doing you, then you don't have to change it. Yeah, definitely. And so, you know, what, what do you guys do to stay relevant? Because it sounds like you're saying, you know, we have to be, and, and of course, like with YouTube, you have to be really authentic to yourself and what you guys want to do. So how are you juggling that between staying authentic and being relevant? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Honestly, we pay, we do pay attention to some trends, like depending on what it is, like if it's something that we're interested in, it has to correlate, the trend has to correlate with what our channel is already about. Mm -hmm. So if it's completely far left, we know it's not going to make sense and we probably won't do like those types of videos, but it's something that we can naturally integrate into our channel and what we already like to do, then it's easy to, you know, incorporate those trends into our videos. Mm -hmm. But if it's something that I'm really not that interested in, something that I don't find appealing or fun, I know I'm not gonna, 
it's not going to show in the video if yeah. I try to do it. So people are going to see that. Yeah. So even mm-hmm. if it's something that's super popular that everyone wants to see, I can't pretend like I like it in the video. Mm-hmm. And I'm the type of person who I'll just go back and edit something. And if I hate it, I'll completely delete it. And I just won't even upload it. Yeah. So I would just say we don't try to stay relevant. Mm-hmm. We just hope that we are to the important people. Yeah. Uh, I feel like that's the best way to, to answer that. Because um, I don't know. Because when you try, try to stay relevant, I feel like you usually do things that you normally wouldn't do. Yeah. So And it comes off as phony. Yeah, exactly. And people don't want, and people don't come to YouTube to watch people, like you said, act, you know, act a certain way. People are really coming to YouTube for authenticity and for people to really be who they, who they are. And the the, the minute you stray from that, I do think people can sense it. Yes, definitely. Very true. Yeah. And so for you guys, you know, being on YouTube for so long, then at this point, you know, how do you, because your focus, well, it started off, your focus was on hair. And I, looking at your channel too, you, you, I mean, it's very hair heavy and beauty. Uh, but, you know, how do you continue to come up with new content, fresh content on your channel? Uh, well, we uh, kind of like basically, well, we, it's kind of, we go off of what we're feeling in the moment or the season or. Mm-hmm. It's on the season for sure. Definitely mm-hmm. the season, but also what kind of videos that we like at the time. Like if we, like if I've been watching a lot of like morning routines or skincare routines or night routines or um, anything that makes me feel good when I'm watching it, I'm kind of like, oh, I kind of want to do a video like this. Mm-hmm. So that's helpful to Definitely me too. Definitely the stuff we enjoy watching mm-hmm. or things that we feel like we need to update or yeah a um, lot of updated that type we know videos that people are going to mm-hmm. request Quest. yeah mm-hmm. uh, so can we get an updated skincare routine or can we get an updated you know things like that that we know people want to keep up with yeah or things like she said that we enjoy watching mm-hmm. you know like let's film what we eat in a day those are cool or we'll, let's mm-hmm. do a like she said like a morning routine or a night routine Things that, like, we enjoy watching. Mm-hmm. Because I, I am the type of person, if I enjoy watching something, like, gonna enjoy making I'm going to enjoy making that content. Yeah. Yeah. So. Very true. And what are the types of videos that tend to do really well on your channel? Uh, definitely hair videos. Hair do videos. Really well. Routine videos. Favorites. We're very product incorporating. Yeah. We incorporate a lot of products. People trust our opinions. Mm-hmm. So whether it's, like, Anything at the drugstore, like people love like mm-hmm. body care and hair care products and mm-hmm. anything self care. Yeah. I feel like we not ac- we've accidentally let that become kind of like our signature thing. People <laughs> literally yeah. will tweet us sometimes and be like, "OMG, the Glam Twins have stole my money this week. <laughs> I've spent so much money at the drugstore because of yeah. them." Mm-hmm. Uh, I I have to, like, they, they warn other people before they watch some of our videos because mm-hmm. they're like, you're going to buy this product. Yeah, we are product junkies. So, so. yeah, product-related videos, mm-hmm. those so definitely get a lot of favorites. views. they love favorites. Our favorites videos mm-hmm. do pretty well. Uh, they like um, when we do, like, chit-chat, get ready with me's or, like, us answering questions, mm-hmm. like, personal questions because, of course, you know, naturally people are a little nosy. And, yeah. you know, but they want to get to know us better. Yeah, they like watching those kind of videos, which, you know, is understandable. Yeah, and it it does sound like you guys have, and from what I see, you guys definitely have like a really loyal, true fan base that people really uh-huh. just are interested. Have you found that like over the years, just been able to kind of cultivate that that really loyal audience that almost as if like no matter whatever you guys decide to put out, they just they want to watch. They want to watch it. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm super grateful for the yes. loyalty of our like ride or dies who's been yeah. watching us since we were in the blue room people call it the blue room because that was the room we shared at our mom's house when we first started filming videos yeah mm-hmm. so there's people who have been watching our videos since for that then, long yeah long and time. uh it's such a blessing and there's so many people who like would leave our channel and come back and like there's definitely people who are gonna not be as consistent watching your videos obviously mm-hmm. but you can tell there's people who people who continuously you know just want to see what we're going to put up every week just because they love us as people Mm -hmm. and I think that's really important also because obviously content is going to keep people watching but for me when I like connect with the actual person Person. and the person behind the camera I want to keep watching Watching them them. yeah Mm -hmm. so and I think that's the important part yeah, because, you know, you could say your channel is about beauty, right, or hair, but ultimately people are going to watch watch you because, yes, you give good tips and, you know, talk about the products, but they're really connected 
to you as a person. So how do you yeah. feel like you've been able to really create that connection, that personal connection with your audience through the years? Honestly, just being, uh, our, being ourselves, being I think. ourselves, being mm-hmm. natural, mm-hmm. Um, just letting people see, you know, the real us and not being ashamed of that or not being apologetic about certain things. Yeah. I think when people see that you're like really candid and you don't care. I just think that they see you as a person too. And you're not just trying to put on for the camera Mm -hmm. or be what they think you want to be. And like, you can tell a lot of people like look for approval. And I think that's also important. Like people who look for validation, you're never going to lose everybody. That's very true. And that's just, that's just the life. Yeah. It's not realistic. So I think they start, started to catch on to that and realize Kelsey and Kendra, they really don't care. (laughs) Um, so, so people think, there's really. a, a huge amount of people that appreciate that because they can relate to that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just exhausting trying to please everybody. So it's it easier not to. Yeah, have you found that over the years? Like you, you were kind of saying like, oh, people were saying, oh, do this or do this or do this. And you were trying it and you were like, ah, nobody's happy. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like nobody's happy, including yourself. Yeah. Like everybody ends up being dissatisfied if you're trying to please everybody yeah so so what do you do to just stay true to yourself i guess yeah, yeah pretty much, much. yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cause they cause then you come on camera is more of a happy you than a frustrated you or you know they can feed off of that yeah so i think that's such a good point because the energy that you're feeling as you're creating content people can sense it yeah Definitely, yeah. definitely. I can't. When I watch certain people, I'm just like, I just feel like she's not being herself, and she's acting like how she thinks people want her to act. Or you, I can just feel, you know, the energy coming from the camera. You can just tell, especially when it's inconsistent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's such a good point, and I think that's something that is not. It's not easy to you know. For a lot of people, they're like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, and it's not an easy thing. I think to teach you can't like teach it to someone you just they have to it comes from within like a sense of confidence and a sense of like you said almost peace of just knowing i can't please everybody like you said it earlier it was really good you said val- seeking validation like you can't be out there seeking validation i think that's such a strong point mm-hmm. so true and that stuck with me for a long time because at one point like you felt like when you look for approval that means you're doing something right but mm-hmm. at the same time those same people probably are looking for that same thing. So it's like the blind leading the blind. So you should just not look for that validation and just know that whatever you're doing is going to be right at some point if it feels good to you. So if it feels good to you, people are going to see that. They're going to feel that. So, yeah, that's a really good point. I love that. Um, So you guys talked a little bit about, you know, monetization with the AdSense. And then you mentioned, you know, the fact that you are, you do talk about a lot of products in your videos. Uh, I'm assuming that, you know, being on YouTube for this long, you guys have sponsors and sponsors that you work with. How do you incorporate that into your your YouTube channel? Well, our agent usually brings us uh, different opportunities. And if it, we feel like it fits with our channel, we'll yes it. And if not, we'll be like, no, we'll pass on that. Uh-huh. Um, so we try to make sure that it authentically goes in a video. Mm-hmm. Um, because you know most people of course most people don't like sponsored content but we try our best to not make it feel sponsored yeah um make it not as obvious yeah so they can still enjoy watching the video right because sometimes it, it's a dedicated video and sometimes it's a mention but we always try to make sure it fits authentically into that particular video uh-huh. and usually that's easier when it's already a brand that we've mentioned before, before yeah because so we usually make sure we try to try to cut you off We usually try to make sure we say yes to brands that we've already mentioned because it's more authentic. You can't say we're BSing you because we've already mentioned this brand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. People can, people can sense that. Uh, What percentage of your, like of your income from YouTube would you say is from say brands versus the AdSense? Honestly, at this point it's 50, 50. Yeah. I would Mm. would say it's about half and half. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, like as far as like ads and stuff or like sponsorships, they're very helpful um, to YouTubers because they bring in a lot more income. Um, kind of like an athlete who gets endorsements, like they may have that initial deal, but having endorsements just really helps with your savings and just like building more of a foundation financially. So it's super, super helpful getting mm-hmm. sponsorships and ads. Definitely. 
Yeah, and I know you said you know, sometimes people don't like it, and um, it's like, it's okay. yeah. Thanks the meals. Like, if you had a brand that you loved, and this brand offered you a certain amount of money that was a good amount, like, how could you say no? You know, yeah. it's just like a no brainer. Definitely. Yeah, and I think people need to understand that because it's like when you watch a television program or you watch something else, mm-hmm. you know, there's commercials, right? And there's even product placement in a lot of them. And Definitely. it's like that's how you're able to watch this content for free. But these mm-hmm. creators, it's such an incredible amount of work. They have to mm-hmm. be able to, to sustain this. Yes, exactly. So true. I think people forget that when they get on YouTube. It's like, oh, it's sponsorship. I'm like, okay, this is our job. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. Do you ever, like, yeah. kind of like, it's almost also like a promotion at work, like the regular everyday working person. Like if you work at a desk job or, you know, just anything corporate where you want a promotion at work, that's the same thing with us. You, you don't want to make the same amount for forever, you know? At some point, you're going to want more when you keep doing more. And when you put in a lot of time and effort, you want, gonna, it, to be worth you it. want it to be worth it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I fully agree with you. Um, okay, so we're nearing the end of the interview. And this is what I like to call the hot seat round. This is, uh, I ask the same questions to every single guest that comes on the podcast. So okay. I just say the questions and you respond with your your first first reaction um okay so let me get the questions out all right and you might have different answers so we can yeah Yeah, maybe we'll like take turns we'll be like okay kendra okay kelsey maybe we'll do okay maybe we'll do that okay so what is your favorite video that you've uploaded so kendra you can go first I would say my camper routine because lately during this pandemic, watching things like that kind of keep me in a calm state because the world is really dark right now. Mm -hmm. So just watching my camper routine, I kind of want to film another one because that was really fun to do. I just love videos about self-care in general. All right. What about you? Uh, Well, my favorite, I would say is probably my most recent one that I've uploaded. It was uh, my Meg the Stallion inspired makeup because I haven't done like an inspired makeup look in a while and it kind of gave me old school YouTube vibes. So that's probably my current favorite one. Yeah. I, I watched that one. I like that one. Um, yep. Okay. So what is your, do you know offhand, this is a question for either one of you. Uh, do you know offhand the highest viewed video you have on your channel? It's probably... Our, our top, top 10 tips. Yeah, top 10 tips to growing out long, healthy hair. Yeah, I think that's the one. Yeah. That has the most views. Uh-huh. And that's the one, I remember you mentioned, uh, you know, offline. That's the that's the video you felt like really kind of... Yeah, put was up on that the tip, map. Yeah, tipping point for your channel? Mm-hmm. Definitely. Definitely. That's how a lot of people found out about it. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it was a top 10 tips. What was it about again? To grow out long, healthy hair. Oh, for long, healthy hair. Old video. Got it. Video. Yeah. And then um, any video and we can start with uh, we can start with you, Kendra, any video that and then Kelsey, you can answer after that you were particularly excited about filming and doing that kind of flopped. Ooh. Oh. oh, the most recent one that we did. What? We did because a lot of people. Uh, have been doing a lot of black-owned business hauls. Mm-hmm. And Kelsey and I just recently did a black-owned candle haul. Yeah. Obviously, people on our channel love our candle recommendations okay. for some reason. Was well, it pamper, and, self-care? Yes. And we were looking for brands that were owned uh, by blacks, black people that had, uh, you know, candles. Mm-hmm. And so at first, it was really hard to find. So we thought that this video would, like, get be more views. Be very helpful. Be very helpful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we thought it would do better than it did. Yeah. And it's only been up about a week, but still. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we it, thought it would have, you know, did better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. What is the biggest opportunity you've received as a result of your YouTube channel? Biggest opportunity. Biggest opportunity. Mm-hmm. I would say... What do you think? Oh, when we did the BET thing? Even though it wasn't the most pleasant, 
experience. <laughs> you didn't go that but way. I'm still a big deal. Um, <laughs> uh, we I got to uh, do like correspondent work for BET. Okay. Yeah, this is so funny. Sometimes, like when you're, this was like years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but the the communication wasn't all the way there because we thought we were going to be doing something else, and we got there, and, and it, it was, was something different. It was something. Oh. But we, as a result, as a result, we ended up being able to go to the BET Awards that year, yeah, which was fun. cool. Yeah, that was fun. What did mm-hmm. you What did you think you were going to be doing? Like, what was? We thought we were going to be doing like behind the scenes type, um, like a behind the scenes experience. Mm-hmm. So type thing. they had like a lot of events that week, mm-hmm. so we were going to be like backstage doing certain like beauty related things with different brands and. Mm-hmm. Uh, interacting with uh, products and yeah. that type of thing, but it turned out that we were of, like interviewing, and, like, interviewing, and I'm like, I'm mm. not very well <laughs> equipped for this. <laughs> so we're kind of thrown into something completely different. Yeah, mm-hmm. but you got to go to the BET Awards. Yeah. Yes, and that was fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I mean, that's a that's a cool opportunity. Um, okay, next question is. What is, and you might each have, you know, different ones or maybe together. What is your superpower that you think has led to your success on YouTube? I think us being twins is honestly a superpower in itself because it's something that's unique in the world. Mm -hmm. So to have us come together and make a YouTube channel, I felt like that really set us apart from a lot of other channels. Yeah. yeah, I think it makes it special. It makes it special because uh, there's not a lot of siblings who have beauty channels in our uh, in our community. So mm-hmm. we thought that was pretty cool and different. I definitely think it is. I mean, it's 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 really cool. Are there other? Do you know of other like twin channels? I'm that sure are successful? there are. Like in the, um, in the beauty sure community, but not beauty wise. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. No, I'm not. Yeah, either. I'm not sure either. I know the only ones I can think of. I don't even know if they're on YouTube anymore. I don't even know if they're twins. If they're sisters, the Eleventh Gorgeous <laughs> is Eleventh Gorgeous. Is that who they are? No, I think they were sisters. Yeah, they were sisters. sisters. Yeah, they're the yes. only ones I can think of. Um, uh huh. But I think it's really cool and really unique, and it's kind yeah. of fun for your viewers because they almost like every video they don't know what they're gonna get. They might get both of you. They might get right. one of you. Do you find are there people that say that they have a favorite? Like I know you talked about earlier, like the comparison thing, or are people like pretty just like they love both of you guys? Well, for the uh, most part, they both. I mean, they all love both of us. But I've seen in the comments where they're more favored towards Kelsey or more favored towards me. Yeah. So sometimes it's split down the middle. It's definitely Mm -hmm. Team Kelsey, Team Kendra people (laughs) that watch us. Yeah, it is. Because they like they like my they like Kendra's sarcasm because Kendra has kind of like a dry sarcasm personality that's really funny. She doesn't Mm -hmm. even know when she's being funny. So people love that about her, and people like how blunt I am. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm kind of like a straight shooter and I have no filter sometimes. Yeah. So they like different things about us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, and that's great because it's just kind of, you guys have that, you guys have a lot, a lot going there. Um, okay. If you were to start over on your channel right now, what would you do differently? Oh. <laughs> we're both like, I have to think about this. Well, I guess it comes with time, but I would definitely change a lot of my makeup choices. Oh. Um, just when I go back and look at myself, sometimes yeah. I'm like, I shouldn't have, I probably shouldn't have done that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what was I thinking? Like, yeah. why? Like, I, I don't know. Well, times change, you evolve. That's true. But sometimes I'm just like, why did people click this? Right? <laughs> horrible. Um, and what about you, Kelsey? Uh, yeah, of course, makeup choices. Um, I would say, oh. I would say my editing skills, maybe, because I can watch an old video and notice that I forgot to take certain things out. Mm. So, yeah. And um, what is the number one struggle that you deal with with your YouTube channel? Struggle? I would say, um, we talked about it earlier, but honestly, staying relevant, like keeping people interested. Mm Mm-hmm. It, like he, like we said earlier, we don't want to feel like we're wasting our time when we put up content, mm-hmm. but we also want to be excited about the content that we're mm-hmm. putting out. Or, like at some point, like when you've been doing it this long, you feel like at some point you plateaued, or you feel complacent, or you feel mm-hmm. like you're not doing enough. Yeah. And 
um, sometimes you kind of get in this very neutral space where you don't know which way to go. Yeah. So you're just like, what? It's almost a, like what's next kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So that's what that's where we are at this yeah. point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So what are you guys doing right now to just kind of keep that keep that going? We're still we're still trying to make sure we're consistent on YouTube and mm-hmm. staying true to ourselves. That's mm-hmm. always been important to us. Mm-hmm. So we're definitely trying to continue to, to do that. But mm-hmm. we're also trying to um, like have ideas outside of YouTube and other businesses mm-hmm. uh, because we know this might not last forever, and we want to make sure that you know we have you know household names for a very long time that aren't just the Glam Twins. We want to also be known as Kelsey and Kendra Morrell and not just the Glam Twins. So we're trying to make sure we um, you know you know, have other businesses outside of YouTube. Yeah. What are some of those businesses? We can't say it. Yeah. Oh. We're obviously, obviously we have different interests mm-hmm. um, and a lot of the same interests. So things that we want to do outside of YouTube, some things that people have been requesting, like saying that they're interested in for years. Mm-hmm. And we've been kind of like at the beginning stages of doing our research and, you know, just educating ourselves more. Um, so, kind of vague but I'm trying to like (laughs) like no so obviously we want to have our own like businesses outside of YouTube also said but I think it's important to know what you're getting yourself into yeah so when people say they want to do certain things and it flops I don't think they educate themselves enough in the beginning and kind of you know research the ins and outs of business in general Mm -hmm. so we're trying to make sure that we're very well you know informed yeah in, in that area before we even think about you know, taking any other step. Got it. And then last question is, because, you know, our listeners and our viewers are all YouTubers. And what piece of advice would you give somebody who maybe is looking to start their channel or maybe struggling to grow their channel? I would say definitely, I I, I keep saying this, but it's super important. Um, Be authentic and stay true to yourself. Yeah. uh, Because it's so many... uh, posers and people not being themselves on mm-hmm. YouTube. I feel like YouTube um, is very beneficial to have more real, authentic people on YouTube mm-hmm. um, because it's so many impressionable young people watching yeah. that it's very important to be yourself because mm-hmm. they're they're kind of do- doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, they look up to you when they watch you, so that's very important. And also, if you're not passionate, whatever it is that your channel is about, if you're not passionate in the beginning, it's probably not going to last. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So make sure whatever it is that your channel is about, you're passionate about it. Yeah. So whatever it is that you thrive off of, whatever makes you feel like excited I, I, and happy. Yeah, like you have a purpose. That's what your channel should be about. Mm-hmm. And also, you don't need fancy equipment to start a YouTube channel. Just daylight and one camera. You don't need like a whole studio like you see a lot of people have. Because yeah. yeah. that can be intimidating in the beginning. Yeah, inexpensive. To, inexpensive. <laughs> so you don't need all that. Yeah. So true. Such good advice. Well, Kendra, Kelsey, thank you so much for being on the podcast and sharing your journey here on YouTube uh, with the audience here. And if people are listening and watching and they don't know who you are and they want to check you out, where can they find you? Uh, They can find us at, of course, The Glam Twins on YouTube. And Mm -hmm. we also have a blog channel called Mm -hmm. Glam Twins TV, Mm -hmm. uh, where it's more like lifestyle type videos. And um, our Instagram, uh, we have a Glam Twins Instagram together. It's called the Glam Twins. Mm-hmm. And then we have separate Instagrams, minus Kelsey.Morel. Mm-hmm. And minus Kendra.Morel. So we have our own separate Instagrams, too. Okay. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And I will link that in the description below and, you know, comment, let us know what you took away from this interview, all the great tips that they shared, anything that you're going to apply on your, to your channel uh, right away. All right. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you for coming on to the podcast. You're awesome. All right. Bye. Thank you so much.